So in this segment, we're going to be talking about the growing pressure um, on the government to start publishing uh, contracts and uh, also uh, to talk about the um, use of the VIP fast lane for certain uh, procurement um, companies uh, to supply PPE and other contracts for the government. So if we look here, the UK government faces growing calls to release details of VIP fast lanes for emergency procurement contracts related to its pandemic response after the health emergency. Matt Hancock was found to have acted unlawfully. Uh, the a high court a judge ruled on Friday that the failure to publish multi-billion, that's my cat in the background, I'm sorry, um, that the failure to publish multi-billion pound COVID-19 government contracts within the 30-day period required by the law, required by the law breached um, the vital public function and transparency over how vast quantities of taxpayers' money were spent. And that's something we talked about in a previous video, that the government broke the law over this and then wasted taxpayers' money to fight a uh, court case which they, the judge said should, they should have just admitted from the start that they broke the law on this one. Um, this was not, you know, this is not, this was not the big L that I'd kind of hoped for, for the government, but this was just about publishing of the contracts, not the contracts themselves. Last year, ministers and officials refused to admit which companies were awarded multi-million pound uh, COVID-19 contracts after being processed in a high priority channel for firms with political connections. That's something that the National Audit have talk Office have talked about as well. You know, the fact that the contracts were given to people, uh, Conservative Party donors and friends of the Conservative Party. A report by the NAO um, National Audit Office said a government uh, a go said a government unit set up to procure PPE in a highly uh, unusual departure from standard pr uh, procurement practice established a high priority lane with leads from the government from government officials, ministers' office uh, offices, MPs, and member of the House of Lords, senior NHS staff, and other health professionals. Almost 500 companies have given been given high prior um, high priority due to the connection secured. Uh, so over 500 companies were given high priority due to such connection secured contracts to PPE with 10 times the success rate of nearly 15,000 companies that were not given enhanced attention and that's something we'll talk about in a few minutes. Labour stepped up his criticisms of the government on Saturday led by Deputy Leader Angela Rayner and you notice it's not Keir Starmer that's doing this it's the other shadow ministers that are doing this because for some reason Keir Starmer is being a massive coward over this and that's something we'll talk about as well. So um, said the um, Angela Rayner said the government must come clean over the two billion in funds awarded to donors and cronies, adding this is public money. The public has a right to know. The shadow chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, Rachel Reeves, tweeted, "How much further does this have to go before this government cleans up its contracting, publish outstanding contracts, and details of VIP fast lane now?" The shadow um, health minister, Dr. Khan, tweeted, Tory donors were given VIP PPE contracts. The price government paid for PPE increased 1,400%. Many orders were unusable and inadequate, but refunds were not given. That's something we've talked about with Pestfix and... Um Sega LLC and all these other places. So these are things we've covered in the past when we talked about PPE uh, contracts being given to dodgy companies. So the Good Law Project has called on the government to publish the names and all of the companies who went through the VIP lane together um, with who introduced them and what were they, where were they successful, the prices that they paid. And this is the first step getting the um, you know, making sure that the, all the contracts are published and, you know, dinging the government basically on uh, failing on procedural grounds. And then the next phase will be trying to push for what, who got these contracts and why. The Good Law Project, oh, we've mentioned that, has also urged the government to publish PPE contracts with pricing details visible to enable proper scrutiny and recover funds from companies who failed to meet their obligations. And this is something the Labour Party should be pushing here. And the Labour Party should be pushing on the narrative that the Conservative Party are awful with public money because they all they did was hand it off to their mates and that's something we've seen in the past when royal mail was published i mean sorry uh, privatized and put on the stock market it was put on the stock market at a lower price than what it should have been so that david cameron's mates could make a lot of money off the lower stock price research by the procurement consultancy um, tussle has found um, hancock's department of health and social care dhsc has spent about 15 billion pounds buying ppe from different companies by the beginning of october but that only 2.868 billion pound worth of contracts has been published so what you can see here is the the dhsc clearly are hiding things because matt Han 
Hancock's arguments are awful when it comes to why the contracts weren't published in time. Government regulations require that all contracts with a value of more than 10 grand to be published and to be sent off for publication within 30 days of being awarded. The Liberal Democrats for, um, Foreign Affairs spokesman Leila Moran, who's been on Newsnight, I think, this week as well, who supported the Good Law Project in, this, in the case, said the ruling should mark the end of secrecy over the government's COVID spending. Well, it's not doing that. It's not going to do that because a lot of things are still hidden. Um, without our judicial review, who knows how many contracts would still remain unpublished, she said. Indeed, government only began to rectify the situation after we initiated legal proceedings. And that's something the judge mentioned as well. The DHSC contract, um, the DHSC was contacted for comment on Friday. It said contracts were awarded at speed to secure PPE during the pandemic and that 8 billion items were delivered to frontline workers for their protection. But how much money did you spend on those 8 billion items and how much of it was actually how much of the PPE you bought was not usable. We fully recognise the importance of transparency. No, you don't. In the award of public contracts and continue to publish information about the contracts awarded as soon as possible. Bruv, you have 30 days. It's a cut and paste job. It's a cut and paste job. If you're, if you're going to give out, show, you know, put out the contracts in full, you're literally just cutting and pasting stuff. Like, it's not that hard. During the court case, DHSC... SE's head of procurement explained the uh, challenges of procuring PPE rapidly during the pandemic and ensuring contracts were published. The department denied it had any intention not to publish them. Well, you're clearly delaying them for a reason. Hancock has not acknowledged the ruling publicly, but tweeted a photo on Saturday morning thanking NHS workers. This is his response saying that, you know, thank you, NHS. Um, you know, we did our best for you, blah, blah, blah. You know, DHSC spokesperson said, we have been working tirelessly to deliver what is needed to protect our health and social care staff throughout this pandemic. You did an awful job, mate. You didn't even add to the pandemic stockpile. Your prime minister missed multiple Cobra meetings. Like this is just this is just BS spin here. This is uh, often men having to award um, contracts at speed to secure the vital supplies required to protect the NHS. As the uh, 2020 NAO report recognised, all the all of the NHS providers were audited. Um, were all the NHS providers audited were always able to get what they needed in time thanks to the effort of the government, NHS, armed forces, civil servants. Like, there was so much money wasted, it was unreal. And uh, we go to one of the clips here from um, Sky News. This is uh, Beth, no, so Sophie Ridge. Um, so we watch this cl uh, clip quickly. Now, you've been found to have acted unlawfully this week by refusing to publish details of COVID-19 contracts. Will you resign? Uh, no, that's not quite right. It, it's important to be uh, clear uh, on what this court case did and didn't uh, find. The court case did not find that there was a problem with any of the contracts. What it found uh, is that whereas we're supposed to publish the details of contracts within 30 days of them being signed, on average, we published them in the heat of the crisis, uh, on average, 47 days. So the important point to note is it wasn't the content of the contracts that was the issue. I'm hoping that will get dealt with at a later date. It was the way that is the fact that the government failed to publish the contracts in the legally obligated time of 30 days. And you would think that given the fact that, you know, DHSC had, you know, got these contracts out so quickly, they would have had extra time to publish the contracts. But clearly that was not the case. So we're going to go to this clip here from BBC. This is from Andrew, the Andrew Marshall. Um, this is a longer clip, um, but I feel like a lot of the stuff here is important, so we'll get on to this one. We were just discussing the High Court case that you have lost. You have uh, broken the law. Um, can I ask you about that? The High Court has ruled that you acted unlawfully by not publishing contracts quickly enough that your department struck during the coronavirus pandemic. And these are contracts that were worth millions and millions of pounds, sometimes hundreds of millions of pounds. Would you like to take this opportunity to apologise to people for that? Well, thanks, Andrew. And I, I could hear the interview, the discussion that you've just had. And, uh, and as was set out, um, it's really clear what this court case is and isn't about. Uh, the court case did not find that there was a problem with any of the contracts. Because that's not what the court case was really about. What it found is that whilst, of course, contracts like this need to be published and we've published all of the details that are required, it, you're supposed to do that within 30 There are still lots of contracts not published, so get a move on, mate. Get your skates on. 30 days, and on average, in the height of the pandemic, we did that within 47 days. So we were just over a fortnight late, on average, with this publication. 
Uh, and the reason for that is because my team were... This is the spin. This is the spin. ...working seven days a week, often right. 18 hours a day, to get... They are working 18 hours a day, his team. And, you know, I'm not going to say that individual members were working 18 hours a day. We'll say his team as a whole were working 18 hours a day, which I guess is fine. We don't know how many people are actually in his team. Um, but, you know, the fact that they couldn't publish these contracts when you're going to blur out a few things here and there, but it's mostly a cut and paste job is pretty embarrassing, to be honest. And the spin here is just, oh, it's just painful. Hold of the equipment that was saving lives. I a lot of the a lot of the equipment couldn't be used because uh, they were they weren't safe. I understand and that, but as, I, as I, you know, I'm sorry, Andrew, Matt Hancock. I... As you know, some of those contracts were nonetheless highly controversial, and the judge himself, Lord Justice Chamberlain, says that you spent, and I quote, vast quantities of public money on pandemic-related procurements. The public were entitled to see who this money was going to, what it was being spent on, and how the relevant contracts were awarded. And he's absolutely right, isn't he? He's a hundred percent right. And we, uh, and that is So why did it take you so long to give out these contracts if the judge was right here? You know, he's not going to disagree with the judge because he don't want to get smacked down. But this is embarrassing. Absolutely possible. The technical issue is that we were uh, uh, just over a fortnight late on average with the publication. Of you were about, what, two weeks late on publishing the information. You could have got a few members of your team to be like, yo, you know, can you just sort these contracts out? You know, it's mainly a cut and paste job these things and the reason for that is a reason that i back my team up a hundred percent on okay so that they were totally focused so on it, saving lives if it was if you, brother they bought masks from uh, do you know what? we'll talk about this later just remember back andrew just I, remember I, I, back. No, I, I know the situation and was, was I, stressful the, the situation was that we were very very tight on ppe and thankfully, thanks to the... That was down to your government by the fact that you didn't add to the pandemic stockpile. You you reacted to the situation far too late. That's why we were short on stuff. That's the reason. Let's not get twisted now. Matt Hancock messed up in the first place. Jeremy Hunt messed up in the first place. The fact that, you know, one of the biggest threats to this country, Theresa May figured out, was um, a pandemic. It was one of the, the biggest disasters that could hit the country. And she didn't prepare for it either. So, you know, this argument that he's making, we had to work really hard. You had to work really hard because you messed up in the first place, mate. And we cut to my boy Jolien Rubenstein here, real legend. Um, we cut to, you know, his clip. The language is a bit iffy here, but, you know, the point is very clear that they were giving out contracts to very dodgy people, you know, and we should feel grateful to Matt Hancock for breaking the law because his team was so focused on getting PPE, on buying PPE, that they've got to carry out their legal obligation of publishing these contracts. So we cut to the king himself. Government contracts worth over five billion pounds have been awarded to private companies without other companies having the opportunity to bid for the work. Three of the biggest beneficiaries were, and I shit you not, a pest control company, a confectionary wholesaler, and an opaque family fund owned in a tax haven. And let's not forget there were 24,000 other offers from 16 thousand PPE suppliers with plenty of experience who didn't even get a cursory call back ghosted by the government like some hinge date you'd rather forget existed these deals seem to have been done with a, a, a slap on the back and a handshake just like the good old days before the law and oversight and well the law, the law. 16 million pounds was spaffed on coronavirus tests that didn't work 12 million was spunked on a failed app that one of Dom Zedick's friends. So what we can see from this is a lot of the contracts were dodgy and given to their mates, and um, a lot some of these some of these um, some of the PPE didn't even work. Like it wasn't fit for purpose. So you know the go you know Michael uh, what's his name Matt Hancock arguing that they worked really quickly. You know in the words of Tyson's grandpa from Beyblade, uh, my grandpa says haste equals waste. You know and that's true because the government acted rapidly on these contracts. No, do you know what? that'd be unfair they acted you know on these contracts where you know he claims they acted quickly but at the end of the day they wasted a ton of money so if they say that you know some of the reasons why these contracts didn't work out is because we were we acted so fast why do you not live by the motto haste equals waste because what you've done is waste a lot of taxpayers money and the question i would ask a lot of these ministers if it was your money your money would you have wasted it in this way the answer would be no and we go to the leader of the opposition what's his thoughts on the subject Matt Hancock has been found to have acted unlawfully uh, over not publishing yeah. these COVID contracts. Should he resign? 
I don't want to call for him to resign. Say what? Um, I do think he's wrong about the contracts. There's been a lot of problems with the contracts on transparency, on who the contracts have gone to, and there's been a lot of wasted money. And I think that is a real cause for concern. But at the moment, at this stage of the pandemic, I want all government ministers working really hard to get us through this because, you know, whatever political differences, what the public know is this needs to succeed. The vaccine rolled out needs to succeed. And I think in those circumstances, what I'd say to Matt Hancock is you need to you know, go further on the vaccine, go faster on the vaccine. You need to have a roadmap on Monday from the prime minister. But I think at this stage, calling for people to resign is not what the public really wants to see. Um, like, like, come on, bruv. Like, what? What? The, the government have been proven, proven, right? To have given contracts out to dodgy companies he then tried to hide some of these contracts by not publishing them that was found in a court of law that second one that he did not publish the contracts in time i wonder why his matt hancock's argument is because he was working really hard his team my argument is that he did so because of the fact he didn't want them published and the government tried to argue that the good law project didn't have standing um in order to bring this court case so they weren't, you know, one of the relevant parties impacted. So they shouldn't have been able to bring the um, court case forward. But if we actually cut back to, um, you know, this clip here from um, Andrew Marr. Contracts were nonetheless highly controversial. And the judge himself, Lord Justice Chamberlain, says that you spent, and I quote, vast quantities of public money on pandemic related procurements. The public were entitled to see who this, how the relevant contracts were awarded. And he's absolutely right. Why is, why is Keir Starmer not talking about this? I don't understand. And, you know, the simple fact is, I think the judge even said that, you know, had the government not been pushed on this, they wouldn't have, you know, published a lot of the contracts that they've done. They wouldn't have made the changes that they w they made because of the fact that they were put under pressure by this lawsuit because they knew that they were in the wrong. They knew this. That's why they bucked up a bit. But the fact is, you know, Keir Starmer should be pushing for resignations now. He should be saying, why, were, why did you publish these contracts so late? Why did you give contracts to your friends? Why did you waste so much taxpayers' money? And why do you not think you should have to resign for failing at your job? Yes, you managed to get a lot of PPE, but had you gone through the relevant channels, you could have done so. Also, the fact that um, the fact that um, so much British PPE was exported. This is a story here. You know, I remember this. Millions of pieces of PPE being shipped from Britain to Europe despite NHS shortages. Last week, 5 million surgical masks. This is from, what date was this? This is from April 2020 of last year, during the height of the first wave, right? Last week... Five million surgical masks and more than one a million respirators were packed onto EU registered lorries um, by one UK wholesaler. Millions of pieces of vital personal protective equipment (PPE) are being shipped from British warehouses to Germany, Spain, and Italy, despite severe shortages in the UK. Um, the Telegraph can disclose. So what we know is Matt Hancock is talking absolute rubbish by him talking about you know the fact that they did everything they could to get this PPE and. Um, the, the argument that, you know, his team worked really hard and did a good job and saved lives here. Because we can see from this that during the height of the first wave or during around the height of the first wave, what happened? The, the UK was exporting massive amounts of PPE. Why? Because these contractors were not called. As Jolien Rubenstein pointed out, these guys were ghosted. These guys were ghosted by the government because the government wanted to go through their friends. They wanted to go through Tory donors. And so what that meant was that these um these wholesalers and these people who had expertise on getting ppe were ignored and what happened countries in the eu called them like yo i heard you got some masks that the government don't want can you send them over here and these people you know wanting to actually make some money and obviously sell the stuff that they have and not leave, leave it stuck in wholesale um in warehouses where the government may or may not buy them decided yeah we'll export them we'll go save lives abroad i don't blame any of these companies for doing this i don't blame any of these countries for buying this ppe the fault belongs with the government the fact is we had all this ppe and it slipped through our hands you know, it's just it's just embarrassing. Matt Hancock's argument's embarrassing. And why wh where is where is Keir Starmer not why is Keir Starmer not talking about this? That's what pisses me off the most. Why is Keir Starmer not talking about this? I'm giving you this advice for free, bro. For free. What is your team doing? Who is writing your notes for PMQs? Who is giving you the questions that ask at PMQs? Because if it's you coming up with your own notes, mm, you're gonna have to do a better job, bro. You're gonna have to do some more homework because at this point, Matt Hancock should have resigned a long time ago. The country were not prepared for the first wave. We were not prepared for the second wave. And so what does that tell us?
the gov- uh, the, you know, the government failed. Kit, uh, Ro- Matt Hancock failed. He should absolutely be pushed to resign. And you can say that we need him for the, you know, the uh, vaccination roadmap. No, we don't. That's all, that's all pretty much a lock. That's all pretty much a lock. They know what they're doing already with the vaccine, where it's being rolled out to, the age groups are being given to. Also, the fact that Matt Hancock and whoever has decided to give out the vaccine to specific groups has ignored it, people with learning difficulties. People with learning difficulties, we know, are more likely to die from COVID. So Matt Hancock hasn't actually done a good job with vaccine distribution and um, vaccine selection um, for specific groups either. So where is Starmer? Where you at, bro? Because I'm cupping my hand by my ear like I'm Jose Mourinho at the Old Lady Stadium, at the um, Juventus Stadium. That's what I'm doing right now because I'm thinking, bro, Keir Starmer, I can't hear you. I cannot hear the opposition. I can see Rayner doing stuff. I can see Dr. Khan doing stuff. I can see John Ashworth doing stuff, but I don't see you. I don't see you pushing for this. I see you saying, you know, he shouldn't be pushed to resign. Let's go back again. Matt Hancock has been found to have acted unlawfully uh, over not publishing these COVID contracts. Should he resign? I don't want to call for him to resign. You should be pushing for his resignation. He's failed. He's failed. The vaccination programs are locked now. The the government have already said that by the uh, th- by I think it's around in in July at the end of July they want to have um, start offering the vaccine to all adults. The vaccination programs are locked. Matt Hancock's not going to have a massive impact on this anymore because they've given it to the NHS to deal with. They've decided on which age groups are going to get it and who specifically is going to get it. And do you know who they didn't choose? People with learning difficulties, bro. They were not in the priority group like the. Um, the um are uh, the the group that deal with you know vaccination regulations the one that authorized the use of the vaccine you know oh just starmer bro like you, you, you're actually hurting me now you're actually causing me pain but anyways i'm gonna leave it there let me know what you think in the comments below like comment share subscribe um, i'm on discord as well you can join me on discord i'll catch you later